the Unimog and how it proves its excellence hundreds of thousands of times every day all over the world. The idea behind the Unimog and one that has been consistently improved over the years is that of being able to do even more than meets the strict requirements of practical use and of demonstrating maximum reliability. Its exceptional versatility is the result of its particular design features. The robust, torsionally flexible frame is the backbone of the Unimog. It ensures sufficient rigidity on the road as well as excellent torsional flexing off the road. The Unimog can take even extreme diagonal torsional movements in its stride. The three-point arrangement of mountings means that even major torsional flexing is not transmitted to the cab or the body. Off-road capability is therefore not limited by the body. The hearts of the Unimogs are their proven Mercedes-Benz diesel engines, which have outputs ranging from 38 to 150 kilowatts. Engines that are distinguished not only by their durability and economy, but also by their environmental acceptability. One characteristic shared by all these engines is that their maximum torque remains constant over a wide engine speed band. This ensures high tractive power in a large variety of applications. The close ratio gearbox in the Unimog makes it possible to drive at anything from 80 meters to over 80 kilometers an hour. The basic gearbox in the Unimogs of the more powerful series have eight speeds. The working gears enlarge the number of fully usable speeds to 16. The crawler gears make it possible to move forward at minimal working speeds. Altogether, up to 24 all synchromesh speeds are available. All of these speeds can also be used in reverse. The thrust tube is an important connecting element in the powertrain. Tractive forces are transferred from the axles via the gearbox direct into the frame. The thrust tube protects the prop shaft from dirt and damage. In order to ensure constant contact between all four wheels and the ground, long spring travel and a high degree of articulation are essential. This is made possible by means of coil springs and the thrust tube design. This means a maximum axle articulation of 30 degrees is possible. Both axles are equally strong and are of the portal type. This means the axle is located over the center point of the wheel. In conjunction with the large size tires, therefore, this gives the Unimog its high ground clearance of 500 millimeters. When driving onto rough ground, it's necessary to engage front wheel drive since rear wheel drive alone is often no longer sufficient. Four wheel drive can be engaged pneumatically while the vehicle is on the move without interrupting the flow of tractive power. By engaging the differential locks in both axles with their 100% locking effect, the Unimog can master even the most difficult situation as long as just one wheel has enough traction. The Unimog is equipped with a dual circuit disc brake system with compressed air assistance. The disc brakes have an excellent self-cleaning system which ensures optimum braking in critical situations when driving back home after off-road work. With the Unimog's four implement attachment areas at the front, in the middle, at the rear and between the axles, 
a wide variety of implement combinations is possible. For optimum utilization of the implement attachment areas, a large number of different options are open to you, such as PTOs at the front, middle and rear, together with special drive systems with various ratios. Another way of powering and operating implements is provided by the Unimog's built-in hydraulic system with up to four double-acting control valves and eight plug-in connections at the front and the rear, the Unimog can meet virtually any application requirements. The short nose cab is located in the low vibration area and offers convenient entry and exit to the rear of the front axle. The efficient heating and ventilation system creates a pleasant working climate. A roof hatch permits an additional supply of fresh air. Clearly laid out instruments and conveniently located controls makes the driver's job easier. The spacious cab can take three people in comfort and in the crew cab as many as seven people. The compact maneuverable Unimog also has a number of further important features for off-road use. Going up very steep ramps is no problem with the Unimog's 46 degree angle of approach and a 57 degree angle of departure makes coming down even steeper ramps equally easy. The high ground clearance makes it possible to drive over large bumps without bottoming. A favorable wheelbase and optimum weight distribution allow the Unimog to negotiate even extreme gradients of up to 100%. A low center of gravity and an optimum track width mean the vehicle can drive across slopes of up to 38 degrees. This has won the Unimog international acclaim both as a working machine and as a vehicle with exceptional off-road capability. The smallest Unimogs are the U600 and the U650 with an engine output of 44 kilowatts and a GVW of 5.8 tons. The U900 and U1150 have engine outputs of up to 81 kilowatts and a GVW of up to 7.5 tons. Highly maneuverable working machines suitable for use with a wide range of implements, the short wheelbase U1000 to U1600. The long wheelbase U1250 to U1650 are superbly suited for carrying bulkier cargoes. The engine outputs of these models range from 75 to 115 kilowatts and their GVWs from 7.5 to 10.5 tons. The most powerful Unimogs are the U2000 and the U2050 with 150 kilowatt engines and GVWs of up to 14 tons. Chassis with high off-road capability are generally used as a base for a large number of different bodies. They're available in the same output categories as the other Unimog versions. The Unimog from Mercedes-Benz, with the technology and choice of models for the future.
problem needs to be solved using four wheels anywhere in the world, one vehicle is usually not far away. The Unimog. Over 40 years ago, we taught this universally applied machine how to work, and it hasn't forgotten anything in the meantime. Quite the contrary, over the years it's learned a lot more. The fact that it sometimes prefers to go up in the air instead of practicing its legendary off-road mobility is not because it couldn't master the difficult 1100 meter ascent under its own steam. Even a Unimog sometimes prefers the more comfortable and faster way. Because at the top there's enough to do. Here collecting waste, especially in winter, is not just an ecological need but on the icy and badly cleared streets, almost an adventure. It's understandable that the Unimog makes things easy for itself again on the way down. Sometimes flying really is more fun. And sometimes also traveling by train. Here in the port of Hamburg, this thousand ton load is not moved by a giant locomotive, but a rather more sprightly Unimog. The four-wheel drive and a special track guidance system make it possible. Fraser Island in Australia doesn't have a port, but it can nevertheless only be reached by boat. It has a 57-kilometer motorway and many country roads instead. The motorway is the firm beach, which any vehicle can travel on, as long as the drivers recognize quicksand instantly, and most of them don't. Country roads pass through the jungle into the very heart of the island and can only be negotiated with four-wheel drive. The trails, which to the inexperienced eye are mostly muddy streams, can only be left to the Unimog. While night is falling in the Australian outback, a few thousand kilometers to the west the sun is rising in the Lever Desert in Abu Dhabi. In this corner of the earth, man has relied on another means of transport for thousands of years. As undemanding and full of stamina as a Unimog, but a long way behind in versatility and power. The drills bore down 70 meters in the desert before the groundwater level is reached. Even after thousands of boreholes have been drilled, and still more new ones day after day, the Unimog shows no sign of flagging. A new water point is created practically each day. Out here, it's a fundamental requirement for man and animals, and for the slowly emerging plantations of maize, cabbage and potatoes, together with the trees and bushes providing shade. What must be laboriously extracted from the desert in Abu Dhabi is found in abundance here, vegetation. And in the middle of the Brazilian jungle, a mission station with two German priests and two Unimogs. They may not be the most recent models, but they still valiantly carry out their service day after day. Specialists don't stand a chance here. All-rounders are needed. The Unimogs thus willingly pull giant tree trunks, drive herds of buffalo and transport people and all safely and reliably, although the average European would find it a hair-raising affair. 2,000 meters above sea level, heavy snowfall with a radiant blue sky. The solution to the puzzle? A group of Unimogs cuts its way through tons of meter-high snow masses up to the height of the pass and makes cut-off farms and villages accessible again. It's nothing spectacular up here, as what's as certain as the next snowfall is the fact that the next Unimog comes too. Tokyo, the end of November. Preparations for the event of the month are at a highly important point. The Japan Cup, the most important race of the season, attracts 300,000 horse racing enthusiasts into the giant arena. 
However, before the highly bred and sensitive racehorses gallop away from the starting boxes, the track must be meticulously trimmed. It's not that all-wheel drive tractors aren't made in Japan, but on occasions of this grandeur, it's a matter of Japanese honor that only the best and most reliable are used. After all, one's pride is at stake. Dramatics of a very different kind. A patrol of Spanish police prepare for an exercise. Cloudbursts in the Pyrenees have made the connecting roads in the Basque Highlands dangerous mud slopes. Motorcycles swarm out and comb the valleys for any victims. The Unimog follows, negotiating the field routes with ease. In the case of an accident, it's responsible for rescue and transport of any injured people. The Unimog's versatility has earned it the name of Equipo de Salvamento. It's usually a title given to the entire rescue team. The Andes, the highest mountain range in South America. The habitat and last refuge of the condor and the work location of Dr. Kirster. Dr. Kirster is a biologist, ornithologist, researcher and film producer. In order to make the public aware of how this large bird is threatened by extinction, he follows its habits by camera wherever it goes. To capture the finest shots, Dr. Kirster undertakes demanding expeditions, often lasting for weeks, into the rough peaks of the Andes in Ecuador. Up here, there's nothing even remotely resembling roads. However, Dr. Kirster's Unimog follows the washed-out trails of the Indian shepherds quite undeterred. A constant climb, until at the foot of the Cotopaxi, which at almost 6,000 meters is the highest active volcano in the world, he discovers one of the 16 condors still remaining in this region. Six thousand meters further down, an earthquake is being prepared beneath the snow-covered expanses of Lapland. Iron ore is mined in a very special way in the largest underground pit in the world. Up to 300,000 tons of rock are shattered in gigantic explosions. The Unimog is responsible for preparation of the galleries. A tanker body for the liquid explosive, strong hydraulics for supports and lifting platforms, and a pump to push the explosive into the boreholes. And just one man doing all the work. Here too, the Unimog is one of the few series vehicles in a world dominated by special machinery. This type of rock mining is somewhat more delicate. Archaeologists search for a long distant past among the ruins of ancient Troy. Heinrich Schliemann would nevertheless be astounded if he saw their working methods. They eat their way into the seven layers of old Ilium using strange and exotic equipment and then measure, paint, calculate and record. And the Unimog, affectionately called Archaeomog by the experts, is always on the scene. The helicopter discovered the cause of the disturbance in the mains. Lightning destroyed the insulators on mast 178. The 15-man maintenance team toiled through 250 kilometers of steaming jungle with its three Unimogs. They crossed nine rivers and mountain streams. Here in the Mexican jungle, there are practically no roads or trails. But that doesn't matter. The ducts can be placed from the air, but insulators still have to be positioned manually on the masts from below. Climbing ability is also appreciated by the inhabitants of high alpine regions, especially as demonstrated by their four-wheel drive colleagues. This art, which such vehicles are so well versed in, makes many a hard winter a lot more pleasant for the inhabitants. Up here too, versatility is a much appreciated virtue. 
However, even such a large number of fine properties can be further improved, though it does get more difficult to improve a product that's already of such high quality. And that's the reason why we invested a few years of intensive work in developing the new Unimog. But we think it was worth the trouble. The frame, for example, a fundamentally new design, calculated and tested by computer but nevertheless scrutinized for months under the most extreme stresses. Improved and then tested again. Recognizable at first glance, the new tube frame with variable web height results in greater bending strength and equally good sturdiness with low weight. We took the opportunity to completely redevelop the attachment plate. Nevertheless, existing attachments can of course still be used, and if you wish, even more conveniently than in the past, with the new servo lock operated at the press of a button from the driver's seat. And in particular, you can now see a lot better what you're doing at the front. The new shape of the bonnet gives the driver quite remarkable vision. We came up with all of that on the computer. It saved us a great deal of time and money, and as you see, the results are optimal. And a new design emerged at the same time. It's not true that only cars go through the ritual procedure of styling. <laughs> we gave the Unimog its own special tailor-made suit here too. You see, we think the driver should also have a bit of fun at work. We've done a whole lot more with that in mind. And one of the main development aims was more comfort. The cab, for example, is completely new. There's nothing to remind you of the former series. It's rather more like a truck, you see. Go ahead. Large steps, wide doors. Generous head and legroom, a great view outside. All switches and levers are newly designed and positioned for easy use. And here you're always in the picture about what's happening. The new multifunction display based on a microprocessor clearly indicates what's going on in and outside the vehicle. Well, there's no stopping progress. The entire cab is an example of optimized ergonomics for increased comfort and safety at work. Our test drivers can certainly confirm that. They sit through thousands of kilometers in the new vehicles in conditions which normally a driver would scarcely experience. But of course, ride comfort isn't the sole aim in our design work, although the driver's well-being is something we take very seriously. Everything we previously calculated and tested under laboratory conditions is once again meticulously examined in practical applications. As the conditions are nowhere as demanding outside as on our test routes. Or at least, practically nowhere.